This is after Lara Schnitger's Don't Let the Boys Win installation from 2003, which is exhibited at the San Jose Museum of Art. This poem is entitled Coach. So much of me wants to coach this match. From the parts of me most infused with eldest brother habits and ideals handed down to me and four daughters, with the intent of equality. Born first and male, a golden ticket wrapped around a candy bar. Vocal cords weighed down by puberty and my father's era. Suffice it to say, I cannot have the voice, nor have I identified the words that will win this race for your team. But I do. I do imagine rubbing the noses of 49% of the planet in the shit that looks like standard and tradition. I don't have the wherewithal or the strength to work that disassembly line, pressing the backs of so many necks, innocent or antique, bearded or freshly shaven, so that the softest parts of their faces dip into the past, and I shout, no, no, stop it. I want to do more than march with my sisters. I want to redefine sibling, set it out in the sun until wind and sand strip away hierarchy, patriarchy, monarchy. But first, I have my own neck, and I'm learning how to reach behind to get a firm grasp of it, push it well, not into the 1950s or even the 70s necessarily, My own 2003 will suffice. I can fill this nose with the lingering scent of something I could have changed sooner. Fill my ears with my mother's voice. But you know better, Michael. No. Coaches should not be people with shit on our faces who still want credit for wiping their own asses. My name is Janice Lobo Sapigal, and my poem is titled Silhouette After Water Street 2 by Robert Minervini for the 11th Annual San Jose Museum of Art Poetry Invitational. Silhouette. More and more of my friends are becoming parents or partners to plants. I have lived long and short enough to remember the homegirls who danced nonstop until 3 a.m., the moon a parabola to our party. I've grown up enough to see them sing their favorite slow songs to herbs and succulents on their windowsills in homes they sewed from dreams. The same sister who once dug a heel into a man's oblique now steals time with me off of suburban bushes after brunch in my neighborhood. When a friend locked herself out, the same person who loses wallets and laptop chargers and saves my broken earrings with a hot glue gun in her backpack, this Penai MacGyver has me breaking into her house at night where we be tiptoeing over her forest of planted avocado jars into her dark room to find warmth. The one whose living room and bedroom once resembled a flea market or a superfly thrift store and sometimes Ikea, the one who let me stay. She pays full price for potters and vases pronounced with the short and therefore expensive A sound. One woman named her garden grown and sexy, bringing new meaning to the phrase garden hoe. Another who tops burritos with white sauce dots like Queen Anne's lace also commits the crime of eating one half at a time, you know, meal planning with a sweet tooth. She drinks all of her horchata and knows how my family loves orchids and she brings me them for my birthday or any other Tuesday just because. My mentee once congratulated me with mint and basil and lavender and rosemary sweet aromas gifted when I was leaving a job that left me to rot for another that was not an office with no windows, no green. The women in my life reroute over oceans and provinces and plains to cultivate a geography of trunks and limbs reminding me that to decompose is the chance to live again. My mother's rose bushes open wide this spring in her backyard without her. My mother's body is buried in a plot of other bodies without mine. Isn't a cemetery a garden of all we've loved? And isn't a garden full of already dead things? 
Those who bury their beloved put the gentlest parts of themselves into soil. My mother is a seed, the first woman I cannot unplant, cannot pull or twist back into my hands. Her orchids bloom reaching, how delicately the petals hang off their stakes like gold glass bangles on wrists against disco lights, against the ambiance of a food truck menu like lip gloss. How bougainvillea spill onto sidewalks like how the sun stays lit during an eclipse. The flowers in my garden grow lively and loving and hungry from pods and cinder blocks. My friends are florists. They water and cry and bloom and sleep from loss and clay and unfolded laundry. Sometimes we grow tired and tough. Sometimes you have to open a cactus to cut pieces off so that we don't grow stuck. Arranging the flowers in my garden is a lattice, a life lesson on how to grow up. Apa by Eileen Hernandez Cuellar. Wall is just another word for barrier. And that didn't stop you, Apa. Barrier is just another word for stop. And you never did, Apa. You walked and ran, rode and swam. You told me that as soon as you got here, you fell in love. Fell in love with the ocean, the mountains, roads, and bridges. I admire that, Appa, because the wall you had to get through had a price. Its hardships cost you your dreams. You called me the other night from the motherland and told me that when you die, you want me to throw your ashes off the Golden Gate Bridge. I cried because you said, Whenever you're at an ocean, a part of me will be there with you. I cried again, because when you went through that wall, it cost you your dreams, yet you were able to create new ones. I admire that, Appa. So now, I remind myself that wall is just another word for barrier, and barrier is just another word for stop. This tells me that if you didn't, I should never. I thank you for that, Appa.